Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. It's Cynic Alex, and today I was going to talk to you guys about my top 10 biggest regret tier 2s. I've been wanting to make this video for a while discussing characters that I've tier 2'd and just never used again, and as a warning message to you guys to not tier 2 these characters unless you absolutely love them. But I thought about it a little bit more, and it's really not that helpful outside of just the information straight up, which is very easy and quick to exchange with you about the characters' names and a very short description of why you shouldn't tier 2 them. So rather than doing that, because I don't think it's as uh, helpful and I don't think it creates as much positive discussion in the community, I wanted to put forth a slightly different list, although it does include most of the characters I wanted to talk about. But this is more along the lines of it may not be a good idea to invest in these characters and it may not be a good idea to hope that these characters get a future rework, a future uniform, because they're not featured in the comics, they're not featured anywhere in the Marvel Universe very much. So there is very little for Netmarble to, to pull out of uh, to create new content for these characters. Uh, now I know there are exceptions to this rule and I, people are already typing out their, their comments in the comment section telling me that I'm wrong. So for example, a character like Gwenpool, that's not Gwenpool. A character like Gwenpool is a perfect example of someone that is the exception to this rule. Gwenpool had a very limited comic run before she was introduced into Marvel Future Fight. She was actually introduced as part of San Diego Comic Con. So last year they teased Apocalypse at San Diego Comic Con, which is huge. The year before that, they actually teased Gwenpool. That's how much of a big deal they were trying to make out of the character. And it was part and parcel of, you know, Marvel wanted to sell more comic books and Marvel Future Fight got a very cheap character to put into their game that they, they thought people would love, who's kind of like Deadpool. And yeah, we love her, but who would have expected that she was going to get a uniform before a bunch of other characters? Did anyone think Gwenpool was going to get a uniform before Hyperion? No. If you think about it that way, Hyperion's been in comics for years. Hyperion is Marvel's Superman. Does he have a uniform? No. Has he ever gotten a rework? No. But Gwenpool has gotten way more love than he has... Uh, despite the fact that she's been in comics for just a couple of years. Sharon Rogers is an even better example of this. She's never even been in the comics. She was m in some made-up comics specifically for the game. And again, she's gotten more love than some iconic Marvel characters in this game that either have never gotten a uniform or have just gotten terrible uniforms. So I understand that there are some exceptions to this rule. However, I still think it's an in important and an interesting conversation to look at some of these characters who in my opinion, they intersect. So not only are they bad tier 2s or questionable tier 2s and require tons of work to even clear Shadowland, but they're also characters who, for the most part, not entirely, but for the most part, are not very well featured in the comics. So I'll start it off with the person that comes to mind immediately, and this is Amadeus Cho. Uh, Amadeus Cho is probably the least uh, kind of obscure character on this list. He is featured in the comics pretty uh, frequently, and he has been pushed as kind of like the new Hulk, the, the awesome new Hulk, etc. He was brought partially to Marvel Future Fight because he's Korean, and because Marvel Future Fight thought we liked as many Hulks as possible, and he's a fun character, don't get me wrong, but he just takes a ton of effort to even make him decent. He's not even close to being quote-unquote good. Um, and the only uniform he has is actually from Monsters Unleashed, the Marvel Future Fight variant. So again, this is not even an official comic for the character and this goes the same way for uh, Elsa's variants from Marvel Future Fight and it also goes for you know Moon Girl and Medusa and Kid Kaiju and we've never even seen the uniforms for Moon Girl and Medusa so you can see kind of how off the rails this uniform is does he have other uniforms that he could get yeah but this is kind of the look that he goes with the majority of the time we've seen some instances where the actual boy the the young man who is Amadeus Cho has turned into Iron Spider. That's kind of out of the, the books right now, or that's probably not possible, get, considering that Spider-Man got the kind of new Iron Spider uniform. I don't think we're going to see a second, albeit more iconic, version with the yellow and gold, yellow and red, gold and red. Uh, but that was the first idea that I had. The second character that I wanted to discuss is Shang-Chi. And again, while Shang-Chi does have some role in the comics, he's just not as heavily featured as a lot of these other characters, even the characters that he intersects with a lot, Heroes for Hire, Defenders, those kind of New York guys, Daredevil, Luke Cage, etc. He's not going to get a Netflix show anytime soon. And even furthermore, if you go down that line of thinking with Netflix, Marvel Future Fight has shown a lot of hesitation to give us any 
TV show related content outside of the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. that we got uh, in the original update and then more recently with Robbie Reyes and Phil Coulson's uniform. But outside of that, we've been very, very starved. We had to beg for the Punisher uniform. We got a Luke Cage uniform late. We never got anything for Jessica. What we got for Daredevil was pretty garbage, if you ask me. Nothing for Kingpin. Uh, and, you know, the only thing we got for Iron Fist, he's probably the only one that got a really good deal out of the Netflix thing. And, unfortunately, his Netflix show was the worst. Uh, but those two, I think, kind of hit home the most with me as far as just really regrettable Tier 2s that also kind of fit this idea. One that's kind of in between for me is Sister Grimm. She does have a bit more notoriety in the comics, and she does have that new uh, show, Runaways where she is featured but again will she ever get a uniform for that show in marvel future fight i i doubt it she looks a lot like this in the the tv show a little bit less you know extreme but it's it's more much more similar to what she looks like uh than this outfit well 50 50 uh but anyways it's it's kind of up in the air whether she'll get one or not singularity on the other hand has a much better kit than sister grim so she's a better character she Hulk, you need to need her for the leadership. So this kind of puts Sister Grimm in an awkward uh, situation. Another really good example, as far as not having a lot of comic book expo exposure, therefore not having a very bright future in Marvel Future Fight, is someone like America Chavez. Now, not a bad character by any means, not a great character, just kind of mediocre, you know, five out of ten. Uh, but the fact that her comic book writing just started a couple of years ago means that. She's not really due for any kind of upgrade anytime soon. Again, unless Marvel treats her like they did Gwenpool. It's possible, but the likelihood of it is very slim. Uh, but I do think that the best example of this kind of Marvel's having no well to draw from in order to create new content for this character, whether it's a uniform or it's a rework, is someone like Lincoln Campbell. He was created specifically for Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., so he has no comic book uh, reality or history to draw upon. He was never in Marvel uh, writing and the storytelling before Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., the TV show, so he exists solely and singularly there. So if he, he, if he gets off kicked off the show or killed, um, poof, he's gone. And there's literally nothing that will ever be created for the character again unless Marvel Future Fight takes it upon themselves to create brand new content for the character. And it would be really bizarre for them to do that because they'd still have to send it over to Marvel and get Marvel to approve it because this is still technically part of the Marvel Universe in some way. And so they don't want Net Marvel and the people who make this game to just make whatever goofy, wacky, strange creation or alteration. And so it, I think it puts characters like Lincoln in just a limbo where just nothing's ever going to happen for the character. He might get lucky and get a rework, but I would bet on a lot of other things happening before someone like Lincoln actually gets. I would bet for a Hulkling rework and a Hulkling uniform before Lincoln for that exact reason. Hulkling is prominently developed and, and portrayed in the comics. He's got multiple runs. He's got stuff with Wiccan. He's got stuff with the Avengers. He's just got so much stuff going on. He's got a rich history in terms of his races and the backgrounds that he comes from being Kree and Skrull. So he's got all that going for him and he's got a lot that Netmarvel can pull out of the well to enhance him with. Whereas there's no well for Lincoln. There's literally nothing on the land. It's just a patch of dirt. Uh, a couple of the characters that I wanted to mention. I wanted to mention Ulick. Uh, I know he's been featured uh, in, in Thor stuff and in different comics, but again, I just have my doubts that something will ever materialize for him. Not a terrible character, not, you know, just kind of mediocre, better than Bullseye, but he's a combat super villain, so that does make him a bit rarer. But someone who you're going to really want to have a lot of love for the character if you want to invest in him because. He may, this may be as good as it gets for Ulick. Uh, finally, I've already mentioned Medusa, but I wanted to do just a quick little mention and rundown of Medusa and Wiccan. Medusa and Wiccan are two tier twos that I do kind of regret getting because I just never use them. Uh, Wiccan is just not strong enough as a blast character to outshine and, and kind of outmuscle the other blast heroes that I have. The only extra value that he has is that um, his passive affects all allies, so he adds the snare, the pierce, and the ignore dodge, which is semi-useful for something like World Boss Ultimate or if I ever played Conquest. 
Conquest. Uh, so you could try to pair him up with someone like Songbird or Hela or another character that has Snare, and you'll see a lot more crowd control. That's a nice kind of hint that I have for you guys. But Medusa really is only used for her leadership, the 36%, and you don't need her Tier 2 for that. Her Tier 2 is nice, and it's nice for Shadowland to have a flexible universal type. And it's, I guess it's nice for the Valor, but I just never see myself using her. So I, again, I would say, unless you really love the character, maybe consider uh, your options when Tier 2-ing them. For Medusa and Wiccan, again, like Hulkling, they have a huge history. Uh, there's tons of different uniforms that Netmarble could give Medusa. The fact they made one for her and then never gave it to her kind of rings alarm bells in my head. Uh, but maybe I'm wrong. Hopefully I'm wrong. And we will see more content for existing characters rather than or including, you know, original content that just never existed in the comics. So let me know what you guys think of the rundown of kind of hopeless characters, it's, it seems. Hopefully it wasn't too bleak and hopefully there's a bit more conversation and the intersection between what happens in the comics and what Marvel Future Fight can do with that and maybe the shows as well and what we can expect next. Subscribe if you enjoy the content and you want to support me. Hit the bell if you don't want to miss any of my content. And of course, if you like what you see, I hope to see you again tomorrow. Take care.